Hello, everybody. It's Rachel from Sage, Isn't Treat, Watery Gel sun Sunscreen on the face, La Roche Posay for sensitive eyes on the eyelids. My um, day cream underneath is Neostrata Matrix um, Repair. It's a very specialised day cream, but really great. The uh, eye cream underneath the sunscreen is the Bioderma Sensor Bio. I've used my Got To Be by Schwarzkopf Brow Gel. I will eventually finish this at some stage. It just keeps going and going. And my eye primer of choice for many years now is MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. You'll see that I'm about to put this on with my fingers. I am actually getting ready for a working day, so this is basically real time. I'm going to feature today the Mellow Quad in Aphrodite. It's a beautiful, warm, summertime, luxe quad. Starting with the crease shade, I essentially create a false crease or I start to apply above my natural crease line to give the eye lift effect and to disguise some of the texture in that area. You can see it's a very warm orangey shade which does suit uh, my eye colour and would look amazing on a really deep skin tone as well. I think oranges and yellows look stunning on deep skin tones. If you have a cooler undertone this may not be the quad for you but Mello do have other quads in different color stories this is the one that I thought for me was a good summer option going in with the deeper matte shade now for the outer corner the outer V and I'm just using the same brush these are very easy to use shadows they are pigmented enough that you know I would not be using them if they didn't have pigment in them I find there's no there's waste of time using wishy-washy shadows so these eyeshadows do have enough pigment in them but they are buildable they are wearable they are easy to use you could apply these with your finger because they are quite buttery I'm just using the same fluffy brush that I use typically to do most of my makeup eyeshadows with on a daily basis. So the idea of putting a deeper shade in that outer V is to give an eye lift effect and also an, an eye lengthening effect. I've got a flat brush here and I'm using that deeper matte shade as an under a lower lash line eyeliner making it connect with the upper lash line with that deeper shade, a bit of cohesion. That provides a bit of cohesion. Any flat brush would do. It's certainly easier than using an eyeliner. So I've got that flat brush now and I'm just adding a bit of extra of that darker matte to tie in with the eyeliner effect in a sort of a C shape. You can see I'm going there into the natural crease and I'm creating a soft wing. Up through the crease now for a bit more depth. Typically me, I always want to build up and build up and build up. Find it hard to stop. So I'm going with the, in with the more bronzy shimmer with the flat brush. And I'm getting some setting spray just to spray the brush with to make 
the shimmer stick down onto the eyelid a bit better and have uh, prevent fallout of course now these shimmers are very wearable they have a nice um, I would say wet look glass glass look about them very very flattering on textured eye skin which I have plenty of smooths it out actually smooths that eye skin out very nicely so this is the more bronzy shade. You can see it ties in really well with the crease shade. And I'm doing a semi-cut crease here. I'm just following the natural line of my crease with that shimmer shade and taking it across the whole of the centre lid toward the outer corner. Now I've got the lighter shade, the lightest shimmer to use as an inner corner highlight. I love doing this with my fingers now. I find I have more control. I can build it up much better and I'm not so inclined to use too much. Because with texture in that area, I want the brightness and you can see this great, gives great brightness. This is a very cohesive quad in terms of color story. But I don't necessarily want it to be so intense that you can um, detect a lot of that because I have a fair bit of sunken the eye is kind of sinking there and that's an age related situation but I still like the brightness and I still love to wear shimmers and you know you just can't stop me doing that frankly so I'm just put a little bit more of that uh, inner corner highlight under the brow bone to give a bit of a, a lift and illumination as well. Now I'm using Too Faced BTS uh, mascara in chocolate brown. This is a wonderful mascara. I have this will probably be the last use I get out of this particular tube. Will I repurchase it? I really love it, but it's very expensive, and I just don't know. Um, I, I'm trying to steer away from so many expensive mascaras at the moment I have a lot of them uh, but I'm you know I use mascara an awful lot and yes I'm just not sure that I can justify $50 on a mascara at the moment so anyway you can see it is a good effect it tones in beautifully with the eyeshadow already and it's a quality mascara so you know I will eventually repurchase it, I guess. I like to really layer my mascara. I don't necessarily dip in back into the tube a whole lot. I like to get as much off the brush as I can. And I, once my makeup is done and set, I usually go back in with another coat on the top layer. And as you probably noticed before, I don't always use mascara on the lower lash line. So just speeding through my brows here, they've already been gelled down and I've got the Barry M Feather Brow Pen, which I really, really love. So I just, I'm just filling in here um, the gaps. And I'm not doing a full-on um, block brow these days. It's just basically filling in. So I'm just doing one side and then obviously I did the other side as well. Complexion products now. I'm really loving my combo of a bit of Fresh Face Foundation from Barry M in the medium shade with L'Oreal's Infallible Fresh Wear in shade 220. And here I'm mixing it on my stainless steel palette, just a pump of each or a squeeze of each for the whole of the face. I'm finding the infallible, the L'Oreal foundation gives the longevity and the fresh wear, the, sorry, the fresh face foundation from Barry M gives a dewiness and moisture because it really is somewhat like a, tinted moisturizer to me so for every day this is a really good combo if you have 
dehydrated, drier skin. And you, I can still use powder over the top of it and not look cakey. So really what I'm aiming for here every day is an evening of skin tone. I'm A bit of coverage is fine, you know, cover out a bit of the hyperpigmentation, but really the evening of the skin tone is what I'm aiming for. And as I mostly do, I, I focus most of my, atten- my makeup attention on my eyes area. I'm not really wanting or needing a full matte finish on the skin. Even though we are in summer now here in Australia, I believe that the skin should be still shining through its natural beauty. So covering it up with a really thick matte uh, makeup to try and reduce oils is a shame actually. Even if you have an oilier skin type, light layers, light layers, light layers. Like I say, layering is everything and you can see me here, I'm patting and pressing into the skin to make sure everything is cohesive. So where I do get coverage from is the concealer and my concealer of choice is Natasha Denona High Glam. I have learnt that less is more with this concealer. It is a wonderful concealer. It is creamy, but you do not need very much. And I'm just using it in those areas that I want to attract light to. So this is the neutral shade. I think it's N4. I have two shades. I have a peach shade and then I have this one. And I just seem to just go between the two of them, frankly. Um, So this is where I do get coverage if I want it. And because I'm trying to demonstrate to you how how to use what products you already have, you don't have to go and buy a Natasha Denona concealer. Just use your concealer in light layers like I'm doing. And you can see I'm still applying with my fingers. I'm finding that for every day, it's first of all, it's quick. And secondly, it is smoothing. And the warmth of the skin on the face and in the fingers will help the product essentially melt into the face. And this is a way that those of us that have texture can help minimise the creasing of such products. So creasing, saying saying a product is creaseless is completely ridiculous but to help minimize that that impact of creasing then this is one way a really good way to do it pat into the skin uh, in between layers i do a spritz of mac fix plus or another setting spray contouring slash bronzing now with huda beauty's tan tour in fair This is a Project Pan item. I love this product. It is a cream bronzer slash contour, depending on your skin tone. I am doing some actual contouring here for a change. Um, I started to have trouble with my hair getting in the way. Sorry about that, if that's an annoying trigger for some people, as it might be. I have a very high forehead, as you can see, so um, bringing some colour into that area Uh, helps to reduce the height of my forehead and now I'm doing a little bit of nose contouring because I have quite a long a large tip of my nose now when I'm doing the jawline I'm uh, I'm starting to wonder if I should just not worry about it at all and just do the chin area um I, I, you know, I keep trying these these techniques, but I'm not necessarily convinced that they add anything to my face particularly. But I do love this shade of bronzer and the long wear on this particular product is remarkable. And the value for money, because I've had this little pot 
for quite some time and yes I think I will actually no I probably won't get it finished this year for this project pan it will go back into my next and then I will finish it for sure but yes it's lasted me a long time okay some under eye powder now Kosas cloud setting powder in feathery this is a long-term favorite of mine it is a beautiful powder this one and the LYS triple fix serum um, fixing powder I would say are equally wonderful this is a lot dearer of course but I do have this one at the moment and I love it you can see I'm using the flat brush this is typically how I apply my powder in the center of my face now and this is another method that I have discovered does help prevent that creasing uh, around the mouth, around the um, folds in the cheeks and particularly the under eye area. And it helps you control how much powder you use as well. Going in with a brand new face palette now from Mellow. It's absolutely stunning. This is the bronzer that I'm using here. Very impactful, I have to say. Compared to the other Mellow bronzer that I've purchased in the past, this formula is a lot more buttery and has a lot more pigment in it. And it's the most enormous pan size in this beautiful palette. Now, I got this palette half price and I... Yeah, I can't stop using it now. Since I did this makeup, I've just been using it every day. So going over those areas that I've already used the Huda Beauty Tan Tour to add a bit more colour and, you know, dimension and shape to my face and neck and chest to make sure everything is cohesive, even if it's not perfect with that contouring look at the look at the pigmentation in this blush wow I was really quite taken aback when I first used it it is it is punchy compared to the other mellow cosmetics blushes that I own and I do own a, a several of them now um, and I love them this one was more matte more buttery uh, but the color payoff was crazy but in a good way so here I am dusting off with a clean fluffy brush trying to blend things a little bit and not be quite so clown cheeky. Uh, and then of course I'm going in with a highlighter, the deeper of the two. Now in hindsight I think maybe I would have used the other shade of highlight given that there's already a significant amount of pigment going on there but it's impactful highlighter. It is really glowy and I love it. Very much a me thing to do. Go back in with more shimmer to create more impact. Definitely not necessary, but this is, you know, this is me. So I decided to put some of that same shade on the lower lash line as well for extra sheen. Back in with some MAC Fix Plus again. Finishing finally with some Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray, which is marvellous. And finally lips. I've just got an Essence Lip Liner there in a nude shade because I'm going to use a very, very bright lipstick, which I adore, from Mellow again. This is... Electro is the shade. It's a comfort matte, I would describe this lipstick as. So I put it on in layers. Let it settle a bit because I also have to take into account bleeding and texture, etc. And asymmetrical lips. So once it's finished, I just grabbed whatever lip gloss I had to hand, which happened to be an Essence one. Now it looks very pink, but it, you know, it doesn't have a lot of colour. So it didn't make much of an impact colour-wise. It was just to bring some gloss back into the, particularly the centre part of the lip. And then I have to check the line to make sure everything is right. And I go back in with my concealer brush to tidy up the corners and the outer edges there. And we're done. What do you reckon? I think it looks pretty good. Thank you very much for watching.